Hi, here I have the Asus Expert Book B3, which is right here and was just released in this year. And I'm gonna show you if it can be a companion for entertainment, work, or even game. At the end of this video, I'm gonna break it down if it can compare to a MacBook. No. So first let's talk about the processor, which is a very important part in this laptop since uh, it has the newest generation, Intel Ultra 5, 125H, and it has uh, the, ex uh, the pros of this processor are excellent multitasking with hybrid cores, it has 4 performance cores, 8 uh, efficiency cores, and 2 low power efficiency cores, which gives us up to 14 cores. It has high ha turbo boost performance, up to 4.5 GHz for demanding tasks, and low base TDP, uh, which supports extended battery life, it has a enhanced uh, integrated Intel Arc graphics and AI acceleration. And the cons of, the, uh, of this processor are not as important because uh, the only ones are the fact that it has low base clock that relies heavily on turbo boost, which may be limited by cooling, potential thermal challenges in slim designs during high-low conditions, uh, and I have stumbled across this laptop uh, getting pretty hot. I tried various benchmarks on both the Asus Expert Book as well as uh, the MacBook Air M3 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And the results on the Asus were pretty inconsistent. I tried playing the Aquarium WebGL test as well as uh, the Octane 2.0. Also, I tried running the uh, speed test. And on the Mac, they were pretty consistent, usually better, but on the um, Asus, they were very inconsistent and sometimes they would be a bit better for example on the speed test which sometimes was just a bit better but also oftentimes it was much worse I mean even 30 times worse but sometimes it was maybe up to like 15% more than on, on a MacBook so I think that the Asus is pretty inconsistent in what it does. Mm, I've tried plugging into power and changing the performance mode as it is on Windows and it still made all the results pretty inconsistent. Also the, uh, the Asus got pretty hot mm, compared to the MacBook which didn't get as hot. Later on I tried running the Geekbench and Cinebench tests on Geekbench both CPU and GPU and the results were a bit worse uh, than uh, the MacBook results. Uh, so they were usually even much worse. In Geekbench on MacBook, the multi-core uh, multi score was around 11,500, whereas on the Asus, uh, the multi-core score was 6.2,000, which I was really surprised about because the MacBook, the M3 processor on MacBooks has only eight cores, and the Intel Core Ultra 5 has 14 cores. Also for GPU, there was a big difference between the Mac and the Asus because the Asus scored uh, almost 17,000, whereas the Mac uh, scored almost uh, 32,000. So that's almost half as much as the Asus. And also the Asus um, got pretty hot while doing all of these tests um, and the fans were going up a bit. Although it was also inconsistent, as I've said before, because sometimes the fans would run pretty, pretty fast and I could hear them and sometimes they weren't as fast. And also uh, the temperatures were pretty different. And also the CPU usage, which on Mac was around 100%, which was really reasonable. On the Asus laptop, no matter if it was plugged in or if it was in the balanced or performance mode, it was always less than 60% of the usage. On Cinebench, we also had a bit of a problem since uh, on Mac, it just, I, as I clicked on start, it started running. On the Asus, it was preparing itself for about two minutes and the results were also different because on Mac, it scored 598 points, 
and on Asus it scored only 237 points, which was quite disappointing to see since I really believed in these cores. Also, funny part about installing the Cinebench was that uh, on Mac, as I was downloading it, I lost connection uh, due to my internet connection being weak at that moment. Mm, so I had to download it three times and redo the whole process. And then I had to install it. And on the Asus, it worked just fine, but the installing process was much, much longer because the extracting of the files took um, way longer and I was able to install to download the file on Mac three times where um, on the Asus it was still processing the extraction I was able to install the file on Mac and on Asus it was still processing the extraction on Aquarium WebGL test Mac was consistent and had always 60 FPS even on the highest settings where on the Asus laptop it was on the highest settings, uh, ranging between 35 and sometimes even 9 FPS. The results for Octane 2.0 also were pretty different and you can see them now on your screen. The charging speed is advertised as speed or rapid, but honestly I think it's just normal. Uh, the manufacturer says that uh, your laptop can be charged up to, 80, uh, up to 50% in 49 minutes but that's a very normal score and the battery life is actually quite good now about design i really like the fact that it does not copy macbook which is pretty uncommon these days most of the thin laptops which are often called notebook or ultrabooks they often uh, just copy macbooks uh, in every detail here it is pretty different and in this slim chassis, there was space for much more ports than on a MacBook. On the left side, it has the Ethernet port and also even a smart card reader, which I don't see too often, but it's an office laptop. So maybe it will be a really good feature. And on the right side, we not only have two USB-C ports, but also the Kensington lock and uh, two USB-A ports, HDMI port, and the mini jack. And also at the back here, we have the SIM card slot, and the laptop also has built-in eSIM chip. So you can either put a SIM card or eSIM. And I really like the fact that you can open it up up to almost 180 degrees. I have noticed that it doesn't open fully and doesn't lay flat on uh, any surface that you put it on but also it has a different a weird hinge that you can see here it also doesn't lay flat i really like the material it's made of it has a really premium feel and just looks and feels nice under your fingers but it's not fingerprint resistant at all it leaves fingerprints that are really, really hard to take off later. So I don't really like this fact, but also the MacBooks have it. And many laptops that just look great leave lots of fingerprints. It weighs just 1.4 kilograms, which is 3.09 LBS, and is light enough to carry all day. You can uh, have it in your backpack and it doesn't make your backpack much heavier. Also is compact and slim 1.99 centimeter profile that slides right into your bag. Large touchpad gives you more room for gestures, swipes and precise control, which I really like on laptops. I don't really like the laptops that have small touchpads, which are even off center. Uh, also, I have noticed that this touchpad doesn't recognize accidental touches. If you're, for example, typing something on the keyboard, it works uh, like on a MacBook. It just doesn't recognize your palm while you're typing. The laptop also has a fingerprint sensor, as well as the camera that allows you for face recognition. So you can set them up easily and then later on unlock your app laptop pretty fast. Also, the camera has a switch that allows you to just quickly cover it. And that's really great for those who uh, just want privacy. 
if they are not uh, on a meeting on Zoom or Teams. So you can just cover your camera app and then when you're on the meeting, you can easily uncover it. The screen on this laptop is 14 inch. It is uh, 1920 by 1200 pixels, which uh, equals to 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which I think is much better than the 16 by nine because it allows you to uh, have, wide, uh, have longer websites shown and also the taskbar doesn't take much space. It has the matte cover, which uh, reduces glare and reflections. And it's the IPS wide viewing angle, which allows you for consistent colors across all viewing angles. But unfortunately, it uh, lacks a bit of color coverage. It has around 55 to 65 percent sRGB coverage, whereas the MacBook has 100 percent sRGB coverage. And the brightness of this screen is also a bit disappointing since it's only 300 nits compared to the MacBook, which has 500. But comparing to the MacBook, uh, at least it has really good blacks. On Mac, uh, they appear sort of bluish or dark bluish, whereas on this Asus, they are completely black. So answering the question if it's a MacBook killer, it is not, but uh, for a reason. It is a different category of a laptop since uh, this is a business laptop, which um, has more features than a MacBook, but uh, lacks performance a bit. It has different features like the SIM card slot, also eSIM installed. It has the smart card reader and um, has the fingerprint reader, the face recognition, the camera cover. All of these are, um, besides the fingerprint reader, are not on a MacBook. It is also important that it has a Ethernet port, which allows you for smooth uh, Zoom meetings, downloading files in uh, rapid speed, and also uh, for any other thing that you may want to do, like watching videos 4K.